Located in the southeastern corner of California is a suburban community called Salton City. Unlike most other suburbs that are suburban areas of urban areas, Salton City, on the other hand, is a suburb of rural desert. Salton City, once marketed as Salton Riviera, was designed to be a beachfront community with a yacht club and modern conveniences. Although enough plots were created to hold a population of 40,000, which would be a little under half the population in Santa Barbara today, only a little over 5,000 residents currently live there. Today's Salton City consists of miles and miles of streets consisting mostly of desert, dirt, and a whole lot of nothing. A few homes and businesses do, however, dot the land, but many of the houses there are abandoned with damage by vandals. When one first visits this community, they can guess two reasons as to why this development was never really finished. First, no matter where you're coming from, it's likely going to take you a very long time to get there. Salton City is pretty much in the middle of no and where. Salton City is almost two and a half hours from San Diego, almost three hours from Los Angeles, an hour from Palm Springs, and an hour from El Centro. What's in between these large cities and Salton City is pretty much only small farm communities. The second reason why many people think that the development is struggling is because of the state of its main attraction, the Salton Sea. When the development was being created and sold, the lake had more visitors than Yosemite National Park, who would fish, water ski, and sunbathe. However, since then, nutrient concentrations in the water have risen, creating a noxious odor from the decay of algae blooms and other organic matter. A rise in salt concentrations are also making the lake inhospitable to fish. A sudden rise in the sea in the 1970s also destroyed the half million dollar yacht club there, which is ironic to today, where the sea is receding due to water diversions. The exposed lake bed also contains toxic dust, making the air hazardous to live in, especially for young children and the elderly. From just a glance at this area, people can think that the community struggles because of these two reasons. However, when looking at the history of the real estate developer in charge of building this community, uh, Mr. Penn Phillips, one can see that this guy has a history of ripping people off and leaving his communities to crumble after he makes huge profits. To understand how Salton City became mostly an economic failure in the long term, let's look at some of Phillips' other projects besides Salton City. A good example of how Phillips bought and sold land in California is Hesperia. According to an article in the San Bernardino Centennial, on April 22, 1954, Phillips, as the president of the Omart Investment Company, bought a 36-square-mile piece of land at 7 miles south of Victorville for $1.25 million. At the time, this was then the largest private land sale in 35 years. When he bought the land, he said he planned on spending $8.25 million to allocate the land to various purposes, such as agriculture and houses, and for projects such as building a man-made lake and a resort area. Two important features that most cities have, though, would not receive this sort of attention. The article says, Phillips built roads for Hesperia that were of a decisively low standard, consisting of a mixture of desert sand uses aggregate and butemen to create a road that was no more than one and a half inches thick. The roads, when new, looked good, but under the withering sun in use, began to deteriorate within three to four years. The flash floods the desert is prone to further washed out these roads over the following decades, leaving many of Hesperia's streets in poor condition, including some that eventually returned to being nothing more than dirt roads. And just like the roads he built, he built the city's water system as cheaply as possible to make the most profit. He reused pipes from a petroleum conveyance operation from depleted oil fields. Unsurprisingly, these pipes could not give quality water. Phillips even went as far to tell one of his salesmen, you need to learn that what you do is buy the land, build on it, sell it, and get out. Okay, so maybe this wasn't his best work. So let's look at two more sources talking about another of Phillips' real estate ventures to see if he is any different there. According to the website Offbeat Oregon History and the Atlas Obscura, another development of Phillips, which has a history very parallel to that of Salt City, is Christmas Valley. Also located near a whole lot of nothing, Philip in 1960 purchased land there for $10 an acre after losing his California real estate license in that May for fraud. He then built, just like in Salt City, an airport, a golf course, and a restaurant on the shores of a large lake. 
After the facade was in place, he put out overly optimistic ads about how Christmas Valley is a great investment. These ads worked so well that it convinced some people to buy the land there sight unseen. For people with serious dough, he had his team of henchmen, sorry, I mean salesmen, fly people out to the valley to carefully show them the fabricated amenities, feed them some expensive food, and then flew them back home. He did all he could and told his salesmen to make sure that they left thinking that the area looked like it was quickly growing and was a stable investment. In three months, he sold almost all the plots to mostly investors. Phillips told people he expected 5,000 residents by 1967, when in reality, 150 to 200 people actually ended up living there when the time came. He was also sued by discontented purchasers, and his company ended corporate operations in 1970. On May 24, 1979, Penn Phillips died at the age of 91 in great wealth and comfort in Sierra Madre, California. Yeah, so with this history, can you really be surprised that Salt City never really met its promised potential? I mean, just look at these two neighborhoods. This is a neighborhood in Christmas Valley on the left. Well, this is a neighborhood in Salt City on the right. Salt City did not really need the Salt Sea degrade for the development to stall. But just in case you're not convinced that Salt City has had a fate similar to that of the poor planning that was put in Hesperia, and the overall optimistic advertisement of Christmas Valley, let's finally review the history of Salton City. So in 1959, Phillips bought land that would become Salton City for less than $2 an acre for a total cost of $2.4 million. He then hired architect and urban planner Albert Frey to design this new Riviera, paved over 250 miles of streets, installed power lines, and put in water and sewage pipes. In the 60s, a few scattered amenities were present in his Disneyland, including a Bank of America, a yacht club, two hotels, a golf course, a restaurant, and a marina. And once this all was in place, he took people on bus tours and showed them promotional films like this one to get people once again to buy into his supposedly great investment opportunity. Apparently, he would give people two options in buying his property in 1959. Folks could buy the land for at least $2,000, or pay a third of the price of a lot and wait for his company to build a house there with 100% financing at 7% interest. Most people chose to buy the land thinking that it would rise in value in the future from increased demand later on. In the end, just like with Christmas Valley, few plots actually had people living on them. Just like with Hesperia, Phillips let nature wash away parts of his development. Just like the Yacht Club, quite literally in the 1970s. So, can you completely blame Mr. Phelps for the urban decay plaguing the barely built Salton City? Well, I say yes and no. It's not his fault that the Salton Sea flooded out a part of his development, and he's not responsible for the economic and ecological collapse of the Salton Sea. However, the problem is that he has a history of tricking people into believing that his developments were the next big thing, made huge profits off of people's poor investments, and pulled out before the paint started to peel and the areas became economically unstable. If he actually cared about the people he sold his properties to, he could have built Salt City to be more flood resistant. He could have gotten places like the Yacht Club to be built further from the shore or built higher up to prevent them from being ruined by flooding. After all, the shoreline was historically volatile. He also could have done more if he backed lands like this dike to help keep the lake healthy, so it could have continued to be an economic attraction for the community. My point being in this is that the state of Salton City is not all the Salton Sea's fault, but more has to do with a bad investment strategy created by a man who just simply just wanted to make profit.